Hi, I'm Joshua M. Evans, and thank you for joining me for week two of our 12-week series on a culture of engagement. So last week we were talking about, you know, what constitutes a great organizational culture, right? That's awesome. But this week, what I want to talk about is engagement. And so we've all seen the statistics, and I'll run through the numbers for you real quick. In a recent Gallup poll, and this is a pre-COVID Gallup poll, I'll just take that into consideration, is that any given organization, only 29% of people are actually engaged in their work. That means that 71% of people at any given organization are doing just enough to not get fired, which is ridiculous. Because when they compare the organizations with the most engaged employees against the organizations with the least engaged employees, they found out the organizations with more engaged employees are 22% more profitable. Now that's why it matters. That's why it matters to you and me. That's why it should matter to the stakeholders within our company. That's why it should matter to the executive and management teams. Because if we can have engaged employees, they work harder. They just do. We know that. If they care about the work that they're doing, the work's going to be better. They're going to do a better job. It's not, this isn't a secret. You know this. I'm preaching to the choir at this point. You know this. But there's some interesting statistics. Small and medium-sized organizations are on average 23% more engaged than larger companies. Why? Why? Is it because you can get lost when you're a number? I used to be, I was part of a large company many, many years ago in my corporate days before I could grow my hair long and do my own thing, but I still remember my corporate ID number. It was HX47372, and I had to use that ID number to access everything. Is, is that why people are more disengaged at large companies? No, I don't think it's because people can hide, because usually people are paid well and the benefits are good and it's comfortable at those larger companies, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think that's the reason why. I think the real answer lies in this next statistic that I'm going to give you, and we're going to break it down here in a minute. They found that there's a 19% engagement gap between people at the executive level and individual contributors within an organization. Meaning that people of the executive and upper leadership team at any given organization are usually 19% more engaged than their employees. Why? Therein lies, I think, the biggest aha moment of that. The reason that people are more engaged at smaller companies or people are more engaged at a higher level within their organization is not because they deserve to be more engaged. Not at all. In fact, I would argue that everybody deserves to like the work that they're doing, love the work that they're doing, and be engaged and actually care. No, the real secret lies in the fact that at a small company, it's easy to remember what you're working towards. At a small company, you can't keep the big goals of your organization a secret from everybody else. You can't. Just like that, the executive team, they see what they're building and what they're part of. But once you get further down in the lower echelons of the organization, right? once you get down into the lower um, roles within that company, they're stuck looking at the day-to-day -day minutia, the functions, the small responsibilities within their, their role. They can't look up and see this grand vision for what they're building. So it's easy for them to disengage because they don't know that they're part of something bigger than themselves. That's the difference. Now there's an old parable I've given many times, you've probably heard from other people as well, about a foreman walking through a construction yard and he comes across these three masons that are working with bricks and mortar. Well, he comes to the first mason and he goes, excuse me, what are you doing? And that mason goes, well, I'm laying bricks. Then he comes to the second mason, he goes, excuse me, what are you doing? And that mason says, well, I'm building this wall. But then the foreman, he comes to the third mason and he goes, excuse me, what are you doing? And that mason, he sets down his trowel and he looks up at the sky and he smiles. And he says, I'm building a cathedral. Now, that third mason is the one that's engaged, right? That third mason is smiling on his way into work on Monday morning. It's still that third mason that on Friday, he's walking out of that construction yard with the sense of fulfillment and pride right, and purpose behind the work that he's doing. But they have the same job. They have the same KPIs. But one cares and is getting fulfillment and the others are not. They're robbing themselves of being engaged. And I think therein lies the biggest problem is too often people get stuck in the day-to-day -day minutia. They, they forget that they're part of something bigger than themselves. Because on day one, when people walk in, they're excited. They're engaged. They're probably passionate. They, they see that they're part of something much bigger than themselves, but they lose sight of it. So it's our job, right, as leaders within our organizations to make sure that we are providing every opportunity to help them re-engage and remember that they're part of something bigger than themselves. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed part two of the series. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Have a great day and stay awesome.